So we're supposed to start the podcast. Ready, one, two, three. Oh my God, rock solid. Judge Judy Diana strikes again. This is going to be groundbreaking. It's going to be a great episode, I can tell. Groundbreaking podcasting because as everybody knows, we are the smartest people in the business. <laughs> I don't know that everybody knows Everybody that. knows it. <laughs> everybody knows. Particularly you, Judge Judy Diana. What have you had it with? What I've had it with is when you're having conversations with people and they ask you a question and then during your answer, they're on their phone the entire time. And then they go, oh, I'm sorry. What was that? And it's like, fuck you. You asked. I answered. (laughs) You were on your phone. Let's just be done with the conversation because you clearly don't give a shit. Yes. Or here's something that kind of bothers me, the inverse of that. I'm on my phone. Right. Responding to work emails and or texts. When I'm in the throes of that, I'm like one track mind responding to a work or personal or whatever it is. And Josh wants to interrogate me and or narrate my life. (laughs) And so then he's like, are you even listening to me? And I'm like, well, you started this. And I'm like mid email. Right. When you started this benign interrogation of me. And so do you want me to stop doing this and put my phone down? Or can I finish this? And then we can have the conversation. He's like, oh, fine. You just, you know, you're just more into your phone. And I'm like, fuck off. You're like, if the house is on fire. Then you need to interrupt. Otherwise, your benign narrating conversation can wait until I'm done working. The thing is, it's like I get both sides. Like sometimes I'm the phone abuser. Right. Because you're on your phone a lot. And then sometimes I'm the person who wants somebody off their phone to pay attention to me. (laughs) It's a double-edged sword. Totally. I've been on both sides of this sword. Here's the deal. It doesn't bug me when you do it because I know that you're doing something. But when I'm specifically asked a question by someone and then they're on their phone, I'm just like, why are we even talking? Sometimes I will say I use it as (laughs) body language. Right. If the person's, if I ask a question to somebody and it is maybe a one sentence long answer and that's it. And they take the liberty of going, I'm talking a full, maybe one to two chapter answer. I use the phone as a self-defense mechanism to kind of go, okay, I got the answer I needed. They're yak mouthing. I'm going to go ahead and act like, I'm sorry, I'm getting a text here. So that they can go ahead and land the plane because I have a million other things to do than hear about all of the things. That's, That's something I've had it with. You ask somebody a simple question. You want a simple answer. And they take the opportunity to give you a 10 paragraph answer. I've had it. I've had it with Yak Mouse. That's the thing. I've done that too to people because it's like, if I say, how was your day? Or, you know, oh, I saw on Instagram that you got a new car. Do you like it? That's a yes or no. I don't need to know the gas mileage. I don't need to know the interior colors. I don't need the features of the console. Like, we're grandstanding yak mouths. It's an age old complaint. I've had it with it. I think the phone can be used as a weapon of self defense against yak mouthism. And I think if you ask somebody a question and you get your answer, and then they go on and on and on, but here are the most selfish of all communicators. Oh, okay. You ask them a question for an answer, and the answer involves present tense. And they start the answer <laughs> five years before. Yes, it's the worst. And they're holding you hostage through the entire ride. You know, the plane reaches peak altitude and then it go, starts going on its right. descent. And I'm just like, I think I'm just going to start doing this universally. And listener, I'm like doing my hand like it's an airplane and landing it. I just think we have to start looking at people and just going, land the plane, answer the question. Nobody needs all of these extra details. And I think what's so breathtaking about it is how unaware these people are at these benign details. Can people not take more pride in answers? I think some people genuinely think that you want all the background information, but I have in conversations before been like, yeah, I know you've told me that before. What I'm asking about is now. 
I do that all the time. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes you just have to say, I, I kind of like, cut to the chase. Speed it up. Nobody wants to hear the history of all of this. Nobody cares but you. I asked Nobody a simple cares. question in present tense, and I need a present tense answer. I don't need to go back to the 80s to start the answer of this question. No. And, you know, sometimes I just think, here's the deal. I don't really care about the answer anyway, so I just need to stop asking the questions and quit trying to be nice and just come off more bitchy and yeah. just be like, you know what? I, I don't give a fuck what you have to say. I don't give a shit what happened. I don't give a shit how you got in this situation. I just don't want to talk to you. That's right. That's the message from Judge Judy Diana today. Be meaner. Be meaner. It's just, <laughs> it saves more time. My serenity would be better if yes. I just didn't try yeah. to engage yeah. in stupid conversations. Be less nice, listener. <laughs> that is our message in today's podcast. Welcome to I've Had It Podcast, a podcast where we are promoting quick, rapid fire questions, followed up by quick, rapid fire answers. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. What is your nickname? <laughs> rapid fire. <laughs> Judge. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. This is a lot of lollygagging for the answer. Say it. Judge Judy Diana Dolly Pumps. That's good. That's, That's good. all of them. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. I have to share something with the group before I kick this to Kylie. Somebody on Instagram sent me something that's rather alarming. Okay. It involves a gender reveal party. Okay. Okay. This was in People Magazine. And the headline is, Mom finds out she's expecting fourth daughter, then burst into tears from, in parentheses, we have a new disease, guys. It's called gender disappointment. <laughs> gender disappointment is sweeping the country, listener. And let me tell you what this says. This is such a jet stream of bullshit I'm about to really go off on. In a video shared on TikTok, Kendra Evans showed her emotional reaction after discovering that she was expecting her fourth daughter. In quotes, after already having three amazing daughters, it was only natural that I, of course, wanted a boy. Gender disappointment is real. Oh my God. For both mom and or dad, our feelings are valid as humans and gender disappointment should be more normalized. Okay, Kendra, let me just explain to you something from, I remember my psychology course that I took at the University of Oklahoma. Narcissists <laughs> see their children as an extension of themselves. Okay. By virtue of raw dogging, you've got two options of how that kid's going to pop out. And to sit there and be like, talk to People Magazine about <laughs> gender disappointment, it, it was likely to happen. Right. 50% shot. And here's the deal. I remember after I had my first child, Dylan, second time around, I wanted a daughter. Right. I was going to name Roman Francesca, and his nickname was going to be Francie, which is so cute. So cute. Anyway, we go to the ultrasound and there's some nuts, a little penis, and I was disappointed for about 2.5 seconds, but then I realized I'm going to love this child no matter what. It doesn't matter what it is and how selfish of me, like I wanted the girl for me, but this right. person is going to have its own life, its own identity at some point, and this is what nature made. I mean, this is what happened. And I tried to get you pregnant with a girl and I failed at sex. You were such a bad breeder with I was me. such, I mean, everything about it. I did everything right. But anyway, I digress. Uh -huh. My point on that is, of course, if you have three girls and you get pregnant again, you might say, oh, I really want a boy. That seems normal. What is not normal is posting a video of yourself crying on TikTok, labeling it with a name, <laughs> and then having that on the internet forever because at some point your daughter is going to see that and think, boy, I'm a real disappointment to my mom. And it's so unnecessary. She thinks that we need to normalize it. Normalize. Gender disappointment is real 
our feelings are valid as humans and gender disappointment should be more normalized. These are private feelings. These are what you say to your husband on the way home from the ultrasound, or these are what you say amongst your girlfriends. But putting it on the internet and acting like it's some disease that we all need to start addressing is fucking horseshit. Like this is a marginalized group of people right. that didn't get the gender that they idealized they would have before they raw dogged. Give me a fucking, a break. fucking break. I have had it. If you're going to raw dog, that baby's going to come out with one of two different genitalia. Right. What happens after that is what happens after that. Right. But to have this level of selfishness about yeah. it is just come on, don't have a baby then, or maybe go do IVF and pick the gender of right. your baby or adopt the gender that you want. But to grandstand on TikTok and in People Magazine with your disorder, <laughs> your non-disorder disorder, non-disorder disorder, non -disorder, disorder, I have bloody had it enough. And you know what this started with? A gender reveal party. It, it always... started with a gender reveal that now we have a disease, <laughs> a diagnosis that needs to be normalized because of the results of a gender fucking reveal party. We have been sounding the alarm from day one. Nobody will fucking listen to us because no. every time I'm on my phone. I see something about a gender reveal. Now this woman has a psychological disorder because of the results of her gender reveal. And she's on some crusade to normalize having a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a new psychological disorder diagnosis for her. And for all those people that want to talk about, I get having a bad feeling about, I'm not invalidating the feeling. I get that. I just think grandstanding about it on TikTok. But my new diagnosis for that disorder is stupid. <laughs> so there, we can just put it in all the medical textbooks. Here you go. If you are grandstanding about that, you're stupid. And I'm very disappointed in People Magazine. Me too. For normalizing stupid. Right. Agree. Could not agree more. Kylie. Hi. Hi. What do you have for us? I have something that I think is going to have you just as mad oh okay. good I'm always looking for new things to hate yeah okay good. I've got one for you good so we all know Jennifer's had it with couples photos right so some listeners have sent this new trend to me okay and it's called a stranger photography session and so what they do is they take two strangers and they do a couple's photo shoot with them like a blind date they meet for the first time and it's like really intimate photos Ew. Like in bed, Ew. shirts off in a waterfall. Oh. Yeah. Why? That's a great question. Here's what I think. These people need to start volunteering, get a part-time job, do something productive because that shows a real There's no question, but there's of... no question, but let's dive into how fucked up this is. So you've got two people who solicits this. The photographer does like casting calls and people sign up for it do okay. they get paid no okay so they sign up to be photographed and it's a boy and girl boy boy girl girl what is it i'm seeing a lot of boy girl okay so heterosexuals okay that's probably the first red flag right right okay so they sign up and then they've never met correct and then this is what is this called stranger St photo shoot stranger sessions this photographer is in an article saying that she wanted to do this because it brought her out of her comfort zone and she feels that she's capturing real raw emotion and that the cherry on top would be that she is playing Cupid and hoping they get together. See, that was my question. So is it like a dating thing? She said that's not the goal. It's not the goal, but that's what she's hoping for. I think it's just to do something trendy and stupid to add to the internet. But here's what I want to know. Get out of the comfort zone. Right. I would think that would maybe be photographing nudes right I would or think, something I don't know something edgier than too white do they look like suburban type white people they look a little goers? bit country yeah yeah I just think couples photos are already unbearable enough imagine doing it with a stranger 
I think you could do like a breakout, find a breakout pose that's not so cheese ball-y. That's getting out of your comfort zone. Bringing strangers together to do the same old shit that married people do, I just don't find that exciting. And I'm mostly judging the strangers that do it that sign up for this. I, 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 I judge all equally. Yeah. The I photographer for thinking that this is like groundbreaking photography to where if the layman looks at it without context, it looks like any other trashy, Cheese predictable ball. couples photo. So it's not that unique in that sense, if it looks the same. And then the couples that sign up for this, maybe, maybe they are wanting to meet people that's what i'm thinking they're hoping it ends in like true love okay i have to ask just because i'm an asshole are they attractive at all by my standard no okay absolutely not okay the pictures just make me really i don't know if it's because i know they're strangers but here's one of them shirtless in a waterfall splashing water no embracing here's one of a couple in bed with no only undergarments on. That's gross. It's gross. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. And the only thing that's unique about this is they don't know each other. Correct. Which which is basically any Calvin Clyde ad. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's right. basically any photo shoot. It's been shoot. done before. Right. It's like we got model A. She's female. Model B. Y'all get together, act like you're fucking making out, and we're going to slap our perfume bottle behind it and sell this and put it in vogue. This is like the Facebook version of that. Right. Dang. People are bored. Just get on a dating app. Oh, Yeah, get on something. Yeah. Build a house for Habitat for Humanity. I I mean, don't you think this is like... There's so, like, there's been so much done on social media that somebody's trying to crack the case and do something new. They're running out of ideas. Yeah. They're just running out of ideas. Here we've got gender disappointment (laughs) with stranger couples photos. Right. Both of these things mean absolutely Nothing. nothing. Gender disappointment. Gender disappointment. Shove it up your ass. Just get over it. You'll be over it in 15 minutes. Don't document it for humanity forever. Did and sit down interview with People Magazine. The more I think about it, the more I fault People Magazine. Totally. You know, I mean, it's like if she wants to put it on TikTok and make herself look like a total dick, her business. She wants to explain it in therapy for 20 years. Swing for the fences. But People Magazine must be desperate too. Yeah. Because that's just a real lack of content. Yeah. I just, I think what surprises me most about all of this is the lack of shame. The lack of shame. You know, it's just like, <laughs> she's probably screenshotted and shared that People magazine <laughs> with thing everybody. With fucking <laughs> everybody. And then this photographer that has this great idea of photographing people she doesn't know well. Which, I'm sorry, I would say, with the exception of nature photographers, all photographers do. It's just like, come on. Just like, hey, look, the internet's chock full of all these great ideas, dating shows, and all these naked dating shits going crazy. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try it with photography. I would appreciate that more. Right. No, it's just, it's bad ideas after bad idea after bad idea. Stupid people doing stupid Stupid things, things. (laughs) diagnosing themselves with imaginary disorders. Right. I mean, it's just, it's rampant. You know, I have a new disorder. What is it? Best friend, um, sexual orientation disappointment. (laughs) Kylie, can you get People Magazine? Let's normalize this. I want to normalize. I want to normalize best friend, sexual orientation disappointment. And I want, I want People Magazine Vanity Fair, throw us back on the Today Show because right. this needs to be normalized because I can't be feeling this in a vacuum. Right. And we should get the photographer to come take some photos of us. Yes, that's exactly what we need to do. See how much better our ideas are than those, our non-idea ideas? I mean, that really would be funny. It'd be great. But see, you know what? This is probably exactly what they thought. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is how all bad ideas yeah. start. It started. You and just then, and one then does, you, and then you play the tape through, and you start posting it, and it is fucking right, getting ripped on some podcast somewhere by two fucking loudmouth yak mouse, yes, hypocrites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pumps. Today we have an amazing guest. She is a former professional tennis champion. She is Serena Williams' former tennis coach. She is from Australia. She is a drop-dead gorgeous gay woman who's sassy AF on Twitter, feisty as you can be, sharp as a tack. Let's welcome, without further ado, Renee Stubbs. Pumps, after we made this podcast, so many of our listeners wanted us to sell merch, which we were like, that's great. We'll do that. But then there was this huge gap in how on earth do we get that on a computer to inventory it, to take a record of the sale, to ship it to them? I honestly don't know what we would have done without Shopify. Shopify made it so easy for us. It's such a great platform. Grow your average order value with Shopify Bundles app where you can create and sell product bundles with ease. Shopify is your no excuses business partner. Sell without needing to code or design. Just bring your ideas and Shopify will help you open up shop. Listener, sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash had it, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash had it now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash had it. Renee Stubbs, welcome to I've Had It, a place to air petty grievances. The pettier, <laughs> the better. How are you today? I am great. Um, I'm fantastic. And thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I want to just preface by saying that uh, my girlfriend is obsessed with you guys. So <laughs> when I told her I was doing this podcast, I, I don't think she's not a, into hyperbole. She's really not into like jumping through hoops for anyone, but she almost died when I told her <laughs> I was doing it. So you're welcome people. I love that you're on here because she is the biggest tennis fan and has been a Renee Stubbs fan since I've known her. So this is a real treat. Thank you. And I have to tell the listener, you should do a little Google because not only is Renee Stubbs like totally hot, you, I mean, God, your girlfriend's a total babe. <laughs> She'll love to hear this. She'll be dying when she hears this. So thank you for that. I don't need to buy her anything anymore. <laughs> Okay, we have got to talk about your petty grievances, which I hear are abundant. So just right out of the gates, what have you had it with, Renee? Well, listen, I, I don't know if this is a, a me problem or this is just a general problem, but I don't understand how people go to the bathroom. My, my workmates are going to die when they hear this because every day I'm like, what woman goes to the toilet and leaves a stall in a public area and doesn't check the seat? And doesn't check that they flush the toilet. Right. I don't get it. Why do you not check your toilet seat and the toilet to make sure it's flushed, to make sure it's wiped down? I mean, I'm the type of person that if that pee is on that seat or hasn't been flushed before I use it, I wipe it down before I use it. Right. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. I don't so know about annoying. you guys. That happened to me actually at the men's final of the US Open this year. I went in, somebody had just walked out, and I'm not a hoverer normally. I'm just a barebacker. I don't really worry about germs. <laughs> and there, this woman had like done the whole toilet paper thing, peed all over it, and then didn't flush and just walked out no. like she was the queen of the world. And I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That is so rude. Did you say that to her? No, because I didn't realize it until after she was in. Then I was oh. like, well, now I fucking have to have her. But I did take my foot and get all the pee and the toilet paper off. But I'm just like, that is so rude. So okay, so you you go on my side, which is I have to now clean up your mess before anyone else comes in behind me and thinks I'm yes. the one that's done it and left it. I am so annoyed for you. That's what I'm talking about. That is so inconsiderate. I don't understand. I've never gone out of a stall and not turned around and gone, Yep. Yep. We're all good. And then leave. I just, it boggles my mind. That is one of several grievances in my <laughs> life, but that one really, really pisses me off. No, it really pisses me off too, because you, you want to go in and see that somebody has taken the care to literally clean up their shit. And when it's <laughs> not, when it is not, it's so frustrating because 
we have a social contract that you're supposed to go in, wipe up your stuff, and then the other person go. And the most egregious of all of these restrooms, Renee, is the airplane bathroom. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The worst. The absolute worst. I've never gone into a public stall in an airport and not had to encounter, oh, no, can't do that. Go into the yes. next stall. It's like, oh, I just, it's your, it's your like little place to go to take care of your business and take care of it and leave it the way that you think it should be left. Right. But right. I, it just, it boggles my mind. And so I wanted to just to get this out to all the women in the world, clean your fucking stall before you leave it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I, 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 I beg you, I beg you. It literally takes two more seconds. Right. That's it. Yeah. It's two more seconds to wipe down the seat, flush, make sure everything has made it down the drain before right. you exit. Yeah, I will stand on those automatic flushers. I will stand and make sure it automatically flushes before I leave. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and have you done it where it's like flushed while you're in mid pee? Because yes. I'm a hoverer because <laughs> I do not like sitting on any public toilet for <laughs> lots of reasons. But I'm a hoverer and I, sometimes I'm peeing and it, it anticipates that I'm getting up. So it flushes and I'm like, oh shit, no pun, but it's now <laughs> gone. And now I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm like waving my hands and my body. I'm making sure like that thing flushes again. If it doesn't, I would stand in there for five minutes until it does. No, Same. agree. And I'm, I also hover. I don't bear back like pumps does. I mean, I have to hover. I feel like you get a good quad workout, a good glute <laughs> workout, and you pee. But let me tell you, as a hoverer, sometimes some pee gets on the seat. Right. And what do That's I right. do? And what does Renee Stubbs do? We get toilet paper and we wipe down the seat in case a barebacker comes in behind <laughs> us so that they don't have to sit in our piss. Isn't that right? As a hoverer, I prepare the seat for a barebacker. All hoverers should prepare to be followed up by a barebacker. Agree. Agree. And sometimes, you know, we can't control that stream. It doesn't go straight. Sometimes it happens. Life is just, it's not fair sometimes. Exactly. But if that does happen, just, it's not even about leaving it for the barebacker, gross, but it's about <laughs> just getting that pee off the seat. It's disgusting and flushing it. Just double flush if you have to. Right. There you I go. I completely agree. I mean, I think we've all probably walked into these bathrooms and it is a war zone. Sometimes. Oh, it's awful. It's just absolutely terrible. Okay, Renee, I want to move into, I did a deep dive on your Twitter and I have to oh, give boy. you some major props because <laughs> I love people that stand for something and are not afraid to stand up for what's right. And on your Twitter feed... You go after Trump, which is one of our favorite pastimes. Favorite topics. Is to do some gratuitous Trump bashing. You also go after Fox News. And I often think about Rupert Murdoch. He's Australian and you're Australian. And I, I have hate some, it. I have some questions about this. So mm. in Australia, do y'all have, uh, sometimes I watch these religious cult documentaries and it's some random guy from Australia. And I always think in my mind, I thought America got all the crazy Bible thumpers, but it seems like Australia has some crazy shit going on down there too. Yeah. I mean, have you not heard of Hillsong? Yes. That is, uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking started. about. That's the documentary. Yes. That comes from the bored people out West in Sydney. They thought, why don't we have a super church and then take all its money? And then by the way, have our owner be a little dodgy. Um, so, and that's what I call him. I call him an owner because that's what they do. They're all about just reaping in the cash. Right. Um, we have a lot of crazies. I mean, Rupert Murdoch, uh, I, I'm, it's so sad that this like conglomerate of a human being who's like, literally one of the wealthiest men in the world and has made, uh, you know, ha has done some amazing things as far as like, you know, his wealth, et cetera, has just ruined the friggin' world. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. I, I do, you, do you guys ever go like CNN, MSNBC, then over to Fox and see like what they're all talking about at the same time? Cause I do it as a sport and it makes me laugh so much. Same. I'm just like, it's like, do you guys not know? Like, it can be like, woo, breaking news and something horrific that's just happened, uh, like when it comes to Trump. And over on Fox, they're like literally talking about, you know, Hunter Biden. And once again, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, the guy was a crackhead. He fucked up. I mean, are you kidding? Like, honestly, anyway, I, it's just, it's, it blows my mind. So, my, 
knowledge of Australia is somewhat limited because I am an ethnocentric American as we were raised to be. But I do know that there was a mass <laughs> shooting in Australia. And immediately afterwards, yep. they rounded up all the guns and yep. imposed very strict gun laws. I do know that they were very serious about COVID protection. So it seems like there is a rational hold in the government in places, despite producing, you know, the Hillsong guy. And I mean, every country produces a few crazies and Rupert Murdoch. But is politically, is Australia, do you have this type of crazy that's going on in Australia that you have in the United States? Or or, are we the lucky ones that get to have all of this fucking batshit stuff going on oh no we now that i live here we are the lucky ones here we get all the cut crazies uh, but yeah i mean in australia like that happened at port phillip bay when a uh, guy just decided to be a little psycho and take a you know assault weapon and kill way too many people on a on an island down in tasmania and um and so the government literally in the government at the time that that happened was basically the gop it was a labor uh labor government in australia which is very pro um, guns, etc. And literally the next day he was like, all right, we cannot have assault weapons. So they rounded up what they said, we'll buy them all back. And clearly some people probably didn't give them back, but most most did. And now it's against the law to have a an assault we- weapon in Australia. And not only that, it's like, I don't even know where to buy a gun in Australia. Like legit, I have no idea where you would even buy a gun. Whereas here you can just walk into a Walmart and be like, hey, listen, I'm feeling a little pissed off. <laughs> I just lost my job. Um, can I get one of those? Like, right. it's insane how easy it is to, like, order a gun on online even in this country. So, you know, in Australia we have, you know, and even COVID, I think the thing about Australia is that we actually genuinely sort of care for one another. Right. And we're kind of like, listen, mate, if you don't get your shit together, we're all going down here. It's like, all right, I'll get my shit together. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. I mean, we had that two-week quarantine. I mean, I was in a hotel room for two weeks, couldn't leave, couldn't open up my window didn't have a window to open up, didn't have a balcony. So I'm like stuck in a hotel for two, two weeks. But you know what, when you got out, we were like, all right, we can party now. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just, we just have a very different, um, I think upbringing as well of, of look, we've got to help each other out in the end. I mean, we're an island. We're fucked if we get COVID, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, Renee, uh, Pumps and I live in Oklahoma City and in Oklahoma City, a- Oh, uh, guess where I've lived for two years of my life. Really? Where? You lived in Oklahoma yep. City? I lived in Edmond. That's Shut up. up. What were you yep. doing here? You know, why would anyone live in Oklahoma City? A girl. Yep. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Lesbian love in the Oklahoma suburbs by Renee Stubbs. <laughs> That was me. Oh, yeah. Nay. But you know, here, yep. here in Oklahoma City, a girl can um, go buy an assault rifle, but if she's raped, she cannot go get an abortion. Right. It's, How fucked would, up is that? Yeah, I mean, it may be, maybe what's going to happen at some point is the women that cannot um, have an abortion will go and get a gun and shoot all the people that are making those rules because she's going to lose her mind. I mean, it's insane to me. This country is so fucked up with its rules. Like, you can't drink until you're 21. Like, what? How dumb is that rule? Like, honestly. And not only can you not drink when you're 21, but you can vote. So you, you're smart enough, apparently, to vote. You're, you're, you're apparently tough enough and, like, wherewithal, got all the wherewithal to be able to go to, 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 to war right. at 18. Up you go, you know, shoot some people. Um, but, yeah, no, hold on a second. We, you're not allowed to have a drink. I'm like, wait, what? That makes zero sense to me. Right. It's like, what's safer about an AR-15 versus a can of beer? I mean, that just makes no sense because you can buy, I mean, the weapons of war, easy, greasy, 10 stops. Not to mention all the criminal charges related to people in college that are from 18 to 21 that go to college and then they get fake IDs because they want to be able to go out and drink. So then they get charged with a yeah. felony for having a fake ID or they get charged with, you know, minor in possession. And it's, you know, our criminal system is so fucked up. And these are basically teenagers, young adults doing exactly what they're supposed right. to do is go drink, yeah. making laws preventing them from doing this. And it just... It's so refreshing to talk to somebody who sees and believes exactly the way we do, Renee. Okay, Renee, I want to do, we're going to play a game with you in a minute. But before we do that, this, I read an article yesterday that I'm kind of obsessed with, and it's called the anti-bucket list. 
Okay. So I'm going to start first with what might would be number one on my anti bucket list. And we'll go around. I want everyone to share. So number one on my anti bucket list is going on a all inclusive (laughs) carnival cruise with 3000 people. That is my anti bucket list. That's number one. I don't like group activities. I don't want anything to do with that many people out on a boat. That's number one on my anti bucket list. What about you, Pumps? I think mine would be Burning Man or any other type of musical music festival that had porta potties outside for days, no indoor plumbing, no (laughs) air conditioning, smelly people. I'm out on all that. Burning Man. So for a lot of people, that's their bucket list. I know, but that's that's your anti bucket, anti bucket list. list. Okay, Renee, what's your number one anti bucket list? Oh my god, uh, going on a cruise! I almost died when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> like, there is, I call it the largest floating petri dish. Oh, it's shit. so gross. I don't understand why people want to go on a cruise. And I mean, me going, like, I love New York City. And the one thing that I'm like almost bath at every time I walk in there is the buffets, right? (laughs) And they just sit there for like 10 hours just stewing in themselves. And I'm like, does someone really come in here and just go, yep, I'm going to eat that. I'm going to scoop it in and I'm going to take that home and enjoy it. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I'd rather die. So (laughs) the thought of going on a cruise and having a buffet like that, is just insanity to me and share the pool and no, no. And like, no, like I am so anti-cruise. I'm with you, girl. Um, <laughs> I'm no very, uh, Although the, the Burning Man thing kind of grossed me out as well. But <laughs> I, at, at least there, I'd probably be really high. <laughs> That's, I mean, the yeah. drugs are definitely dr- superior. I don't know that there's a bottle of pills big enough that could get me <laughs> through a cruise. I just do not think that I could do it. I, 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 you know how you hear about people that go missing from cruise ships. I would be that person. I think I, you know, I've never really had suicidal ideation, but I think it could lead me to that. I abhor all you can eat buffets. I think it's a terrible idea to suggest all you can eat. And a floating cruise ship is just chock full of bad ideas, in my opinion. And and I don't I don't want any part of it. None. <laughs> Girl, I'm right there with you. No <laughs> chance. Can you imagine? Even and then if you like somebody or a couple of people like pissed you off and like followed you around on a cruise ship and you just like I can't even, I can't even leave this place. Like, yeah, right. I'm uh, stuck. Yeah, it would be terrible. You know, can I can I like take one of those floating little boat things and just like <laughs> clip the rope and like jump in it and get the fuck out of there? I don't know. Like emergency, Rose. emergency. Like yeah. Rose from like Titanic. Rose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Now we're going to play a game with you called had it or hit it. If you don't like something, you will say you've had it. And if you like it, you'll hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to had it or hit it. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Had it or hit it. Botox. No, no, no. Hit it. Not too much, but hit it. I like the more the better. I like, mm. I like a little bit's not enough. I like a lot. You know where I've had it recently and it's life changing. And I'm going to tell this to anybody who has this issue in my armpits. Oh my God. Life changing. Really? About the sweating? Yes. Life changing. So for people out there <clears throat> that sweat in their armpits and people are like, that's disgusting and gross. It's not. It happens all, all the time to women and men. And when you work on TV and you have a colored shirt on, trust me when I tell you having Botox in your armpits has like changed my life. That is a great tip. I just recently heard about that and I've heard great things about it. So I'm glad to hear you say that. Nothing happening here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Renee had it or hit it Florida. Oh God, this is a tough one. Um, Obviously had it with the government and everybody in it that has voted for Trump. And there's a lot of them. Hit it with all my friends uh, because I love St. Pete. I love certain areas. I have a lot of friends that live down in Florida who vote the way that I would. Um, and so I hit it for the for the sun and the love and of my friends, but I've had it with the government. Agree. 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 Ron DeSantis is just Ugh. not likable. What's up with those shoes? What's up with the heels? What's up right. with the boots? Like now people are thinking that he's like got a platform in there. Have you noticed that? Yes, yes. he definitely has a platform in there because I think he's shorter uh, than his wife. 
And I, and I, don't think, I mean, I don't think he's very tall. It's a it's a short man thing. It's little a Dick Kitten energy. Hill boot. It is. It is this Ugh. little, and he's trying to be so folksy and American by wearing his cowboy boots. But if you, I mean, he's on, not from Oklahoma. No, no, he's not. And he went to like Yale or something. Right. And I'm like, how does somebody that is Ivy League educated? Such a fucking fascist. I mean, right. it just is so, I mean, such a waste of the time that he spent to learn about the world and open his mind. And he goes back and he's mad about gay people and Disneyland. I'm like, if I can get over it. You know what? Here's the thing. I want to see his Google search history. Right. People that are very <laughs> anti-gay. I think that I want to see their Google search history because I'm thinking, Renee, that when rubber mm -hmm. hits the road, he might be no thinking pun. about penises sometimes. That's what no all I'm pun. saying. That's right. If you're screaming. Yep, when that road, rubber gets put on that road. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt that he has. I mean, look, he's just got a punchable face. Let's face it. I mean, yeah. the guy is gross. Yeah, he's, he's gross because he knows better. But he's using this white, he's the way, he's like, all these guys are coming out as white supremacists. They're afraid of immigrants. They're af afraid of gay people. They're afraid of anyone that doesn't like look like them. Okay. <laughs> Had it or hit it, Taylor Swift. Oh, hit it. Come on. I love Taylor. I love Taylor <laughs> Swift. I have to say. Come on. I do too. And you know, it's a funny thing because I, I've said this to so many people. I want to hate Taylor Swift. Like I want to dislike her so much. I want to be like, oh, she's so annoying. It's like, oh, uh, she's everywhere. Swifties, Swifties, blah. But I'm like, I love her music. Like I remember seeing her one time on The Voice and she's like just praising this person who was singing like, my God, you've got the most amazing voice. I wish I could sing like that, but I write a hell of a hook. And I thought right. that's true. She just, her music, she writes it. She writes from her heart. She writes such interesting, like fun lyrics. I'm just like, all right, I'm I'm in. Fuck it. I've given up trying to hate her. I'm just <laughs> get it. She's worn me down. I She's love... worn me down with hit after hit after <laughs> hit. <friggin> hit. <laughs> Renee, yeah. I love that your default setting is like intellectually, I know I should hate her and I'm gonna try. Yep. But then you just finally acquiesce and you're like, okay, I have to like her. Cause my default setting is similar. <laughs> like, I know I shouldn't like this cheesy shit, but I just can't help it. I do. I started watching The Golden Bachelor last night. Oh, did you? Oh, no. Yes. Oh, my God. It is everything that I should hate. I'm only one episode in. And I'm, like, so proud of these women and this guy and his little hearing aids. And I'm thinking, sitting there thinking, what the fuck is happening to me? This I should not be watching this. This is terrible. When is the next because episode going to be demo. out? It's our demo. It's our demo. It's our demo. I mean, it's not my demo. I'm not into the old fellas, but it is my demo. Uh, okay, Renee, last one. Had it or hit it, pickleball. Oh, God. I ha I, I'm get this is going to be controversial for you, especially you, Jen. But I hate pickleball. It's so dumb. It's like, just play tennis. Go and, like, you know why people love pickleball especially and this is going to be upsetting to you yeah okay. i know but i can take like, it like 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 it's i could play pickleball with my frying pan like it's not <laughs> hard to do which is why people are like oh i gotta love pickleball that's because you're standing there just popping this plastic little thing off a stupid like bat it's like go and play tennis learn how to play and run okay for the elderly i think it's great to get them out there and just clip at least they're standing doing something, even though I would argue and say that it's not that good for you because you're bending and your knees and your back. Go for a walk. Like, honestly, go for a walk if you want exercise and get a group together. Because I hear this all the time. People are like, oh, my God, but it's so great. We all get together and we drink and have a good time. It's like, well, you can do that with a walk, too. I mean, you can go to a park <laughs> and, like, throw the footy around, as we say. But I don't know. I'm just, no. And it's stealing tennis courts away from tennis players. And for us, particularly in New York, like, whether it's, like, only a few tennis courts and then it gets overrun by people with in pickleball. And the noise, the noise. Oh, my God. Don't talk to Judy Gold about it. She will give you a full dressing down about how much she hates people. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Would you rather play pickleball? I'm talking about four hours in one day, match at game after game after game, or go to dinner with Ron DeSantis for two hours. 
Oh my God. Um, I would, <laughs> whatever it took, I would be severely on either mushrooms or a lot of weed. <laughs> And then I could do it. And I would, you would just, I would just pick, a, you know, which one out of the hat. Although with DeSantis for two hours, I could record it and hopefully get him on, 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 uh, you know, on the recorder, on a voice message or something saying something's controversial and be his downfall. Well, I love it. That's using your time wisely. I love it. Renee, thank you so, so much for joining us. You are so welcome, guys. I'm I'm uh, th- I'm very happy that I was able to make my girlfriend's dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> and tell her we think she's a total babe, right? And we loved <laughs> we loved having you on. You're so much fun. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. See you later. I mean, I love Renee Stubbs. She's the best. I mean, she's so much fun. What about the accent? God, that's halfway through. I was like, she kind of makes me want to be a lesbian. She's hot. She's hilarious. She's smart in the Australian accent. If How she, can you go wrong? If she didn't have such a hot lesbian girlfriend right now, you'd push me. Maybe honor. she could move back to Oklahoma <laughs> City for round two with pumps. <laughs> and it's so weird because I've watched her on ESPN forever. So it's just like, I feel like now she's my friend. <laughs> she is our friend. <laughs> Renee Stubbs is our friend. She's a former Oklahoman. That's right. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is a badass. She, she is. is a total badass. She's yeah. smart. How much do you like that accent? Oh God, it's a 10 out of 10. Renee, I'm just telling you, if you and that hot piece of ass, <laughs> young girlfriend that you have ever break up, and we're not supporting that because I support the relationship you're in. For sure. I totally think Pumps is gay, and I think you could do <laughs> Oklahoma City round two. We'll talk about it later. Listener, please go to Apple Five Star Review, Patreon, lots of fuckery going on there. Hot shit Sim- tour. Hot shit tour is fucking hot shit. Hot shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, go to give us um, Instagram voice memos. Yes. And we will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both. I've had it with.